I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the Foundation. Today, I've got Neegs, and I've got Rob, and boy, this is going to be a fun update today. How's it going, Neegs? How's it going, Rob? Good. I put on a new suit for you guys. Well, that's it's a great day. That's <laughs> looking <laughs> sharp. Hey, guys. Happy to be with you. <laughs> I, I still have my old man sweater on. You do. You look like a teacher. <laughs> I don't have oh, much. Or you got a pipe and you're watching TV saying, get off my get lawn. Get off my <laughs> lawn. Yeah, I don't have the, the um, Clint Eastwood look going on. No, I don't have much choices for the avatar for, for now. I just have like, no, it's kind no. of one. Uh, I'll see if I can change yeah. that. It looks like you with a big head. So that's good. A <laughs> big head. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we got the market updates or something we'll start with, right? Is that what we're going to do today? Start with the market updates? All yeah. Right. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's been, I mean, other than Bitcoin balancing up and down, it's been pretty quiet. Um, I found a couple of things. Um, I found a, a link talking about uh, in token unlocks in just in the last two weeks, $2 billion worth. That's crazy. Uh, that's a lot. That's from Coinpedia. If you want to look it up. Um, I don't have much to say on it. It's just, I think it's all remnant for us. It's all kind of reminiscent, right. Of previous, of the, of the run up to previous yeah. bulls. Uh, I think, I think we're probably going to say this a lot today. Like, yo, <laughs> this is what happened last time. <laughs> so I think we're going to see even more of this coming up in the, in the next few months. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, another clear sign that things are I, just going as normal. I think that's right. I think that's, and that's. That's correct. Uh, on, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I think that's exactly what uh, we were talking about last time. It really fits with what we really plan. Um, big expectations for the halving. Nothing really happens. And then some correction. Uh, I think we're still not completely um, out of it. I, I think we might have still some, some little way down. But I think we'll still consolidate for a few months, like you just said before, before we see the new, you know, the new hype behind Bitcoin and everything kind of exploding everywhere. So I think we, we have a little bit of time to, to prepare probably after yep. summer or the, yeah, the last part of the year, we'll probably see a lot of movement. Yeah. I think a lot of people are, are just, they're kind of mirroring the same comments. It's not a lot of fear. It's more like, be patient, <laughs> right? I think that's what it is. Yeah. We've been here before. Yeah. There has been the pullback that has happened quite a few times now. We say quite a few. It sounds like there's been many, but there's the few times it's happened. There's been that pullback. And then there's a lot of predictions on you know, potential peaks, which I don't necessarily like to get into, but some people have really stressed that peak where it's you know, a five times where we are here or a four times where we are here um, based upon previous trends, right? This, these cycles that happens with Bitcoin, there's always that pullback, there's a bounce. And I think you can look mm -hmm. at those kinds of things, but no matter what, again, as I stated last two weeks ago, if you, and, and I stated also in social media channels, if you zoom out, it's always been an upward chart. <laughs> this is just, just always. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I like on that in the last two weeks, we saw Bitcoin tank, uh, 7%. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's funny how in Bitcoin tanking is 7% and then like in stocks, like tanking is like or less <laughs> and, and then altcoins <laughs> tanking is like what? 98%. I mean, yeah, <laughs> the same word for, for different things. Well, the volatility <laughs> is there. You don't get the volatility in stocks. You get extreme volatility in, yeah. in altcoins, right? Which we're very familiar with. Yeah. And you get less volatility Definitely. as you move into, into Bitcoin, right? Um, but you, it can still happen. I, I, I won't say that Bitcoin can't drop a, a number that is super hyper uh, dynamic. It, it absolutely can. But then it can also rebound the same way and get that level of stability that you, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and so what I've seen is like when we dip down into the fifties, I saw I saw some panic. Yeah, uh, on the interwaves there, uh, I didn't feel it myself because I, I just thought this feels kind of normal. Yeah, I mean it's a little you know it's a little 
weird to see it. But I mean, if I saw something in the forties, I think I would <laughs> get, get a little I think emotional. People but would really panic. It didn't feel like it didn't feel like an emergency to me at all. But I, I you know, all the doom saying had cropped out. And it, like, it's that sort of felt like a bottom. I'm not saying we're there. It just felt like one to me because people were saying things unironically. Uh, they were like, you know, this looks bad. And I don't didn't think it was it proven out yeah. not to be. But when people start saying that, like without sarcasm, uh, that 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 feels like a, that feels like a good time to me. Like we're 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 going to head up after that. But again, I I think we I, I think uh, somebody said. Uh, that we're still expecting. It was on, uh, I think Neegs, you pointed out. So we're still expecting, or somebody's still still expecting another decent right, drop. Right. So I was reading, and honestly, it's not it's not anything that is groundbreaking. It's really something we should expect because it's yeah. again aligned with what you what we said in the last two videos. It's basically looking at past performance, right? And the person yeah. was saying that based on past performance and particularly 2016. It, the the behavior basically reproduced exactly the same uh, the same pattern and if we see another leg down uh, to be again to be matching the 2016 pattern we would have basically within 10 to 15 days to to see a new low before seeing a slow consolidation up and again in a few months um seeing for going for the new top and you know they're throwing numbers yep. 200k 300k yeah, I mean, we yeah, we'll pretty, see we'll see wild. where we go, but until now it is we'll really see. following what again what we expected, which is something very similar to to what we have seen until now. It's it could always change, and it could we could always see a different pattern from the ones we have all, always seen. But if you expect that, you're kind of betting against the odds because like sure. the odds are really following the same pattern. Yeah, I see an article from Kitco, which I think is has some legitimacy, as much as it goes, talking about a, a 200k Bitcoin price target. I I have just personally, I have trouble believing it. It's kind of like the fallacy of large yeah. numbers to me. Um, and I'm I'm not a trader, but it's this is the kind of stuff that I've seen in the last two weeks that we've just been talking about. No real, nothing ground shaking, earth shattering in in the big in the crypto markets. The thing about uh, the stock market and the connection with um, Bitcoin and other assets is, you know, we always get the question, um, is it like, will Bitcoin uh, stay if there is any problem, if there is a war or if there is like, you know, the pandemic that we had. And it seems that what we've seen is, I think one thing to understand is that it is like people are buying or selling those assets, right? Um, being the stock market or being Bitcoin. And so obviously you will see the same kind of behavior. If there is fear, you will see those fear reflected in every market. It's not, it's not a fiat thing, right? It's, it's a people thing. Like people are worried. They, they liquidate some of their assets that are less liquid and, you know, they invest in things that they think they will need. Um, more urgently and and of course that's something that you you could see during the pandemic bitcoin immediately dropped however the thing that you can also see is that it recovers a lot faster if you look at the um, normal stock stock market or even the the currencies for because that's more the kind of things that are comparable to bitcoin or or dv right um is the currencies and then you see that the way to recover for a currency is actually a very slow grind up. And on cryptocurrencies, it's actually extremely fast. Every time there is a fear that's coming, every time you have a new hope about basically, uh, you know, the adoption of those currencies, and you can see that um, it raised to insane levels. And that's for one reason, right? The reason is that everybody understands we're very early. And everybody understands that at some point it will become um, a main, uh, you know, a mainstream asset. And, and of course, everybody um, understands that this crisis, when it, whichever the crisis you want to talk about, was temporary. And, and then now we're going back to um, adoption, right? While on the fiat side, it's quite the opposite. Like every time there is a crisis, everybody wonders if it's the last crisis for this system. Because... 
you know, nobody knows if it will if we'll be able to uh, recover after those big ones. I, th I think that's yeah. a good point to make about the recovery. When you think about stocks and world markets, those are dealing with companies. A company could be in a country that is having some sort of turmoil. That affects what shares you own in that company. If you own cryptocurrency, Bitcoin in our example, it doesn't matter if a miner in a specific country or in the case of, let's say, Asia, we've seen um, in the Middle East or we've seen in Asia where certain uh, uh, countries will ban something. That's not, a, that's not a war. That's not a problem. In any case, it's a war against crypto. But what ends up happening is that nothing really changes. There's a short term little fear that goes on. But then those miners then either migrate or other miners take up that opportunity. So when it comes to crypto and it comes to supporting crypto, it's resistant to certain things that really do negatively impact, let's say, banking centers or companies for that matter. Um, they can be restricted, they can be censored, and they can be blocked. And that can affect, that can affect, I can't even speak, that can affect a lot of their network connectivity where, no pun intended, that network connectivity in something like a blockchain is flexible, it's malleable, it, it, it drops one connection and increases another connection. You're never stuck in any way. So I think that there's some of the technological infrastructures that benefit the value said offering would be in a currency um, and it's very different than what we would say the value that you may have held in ownership in a company. It's a it's a it's an economy, and it's a currency as opposed to and it's decentralized as opposed to a company that can be impacted legally in so many ways. So I I think that that probably has an effect on the yeah. It's the funny. Market. It's like the S and P is kind of like this index of of like five hundred companies. Yeah, and I you can sort of think of Bitcoin and some other ones as kind of a like an index of of like I don't know a hundred countries. I don't know. I don't know. Actually, know the distribution of miners throughout the world, but it's kind of an index of multiple countries um, and still being pretty rock solid. And, and it may not. Be, I mean, in, sorry, the price may not be an index, but the hash rate may be an index or things like that. Something other than there's a bunch of interesting data that comes out of looking at all aspects of major blockchain uh, information. Uh, and you can use it to evaluate like what's happening in different places, much like you can look at sectors on the so on the stock market. Um, don't really see a lot of people talking about that, but I think you can do it that way. Um, speaking of the S and P, um, I was just looking at uh, Peter Brandt. I, I, as I told you guys I don't really know who he is from, other than being able to predict one of the tops. <laughs> um, but he's looking at the stock market, the S and P five hundred, and saying that there's nothing bearish there at all. Um, Whereas I see uh, a tweet of the Canadian uh, minister or something or other, I can't remember exactly what I saw, um, and uh, complaining about how Canadians' economy is on is on the ropes. It's just weird to see these kind of on this in the stock market side, very uh, opposing kind of uh, ideas and. Um, Kind of impressions that's what i'm looking for uh about how how things are behaving right now yeah. it's very bullish according to peter brandt in, for the s p 500 and it's looking super bearish about the entire economy uh which i could find who 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 wrote that um in uh uh for in in canada uh according to this one guy of course mm -hmm. uh, it was the it's tiff macklem the governor of the Central Bank of Canada. So I'm not just talking about some dude in Canada. I'm talking about you know, a significant person saying this uh, about the financial collapse in, in, in the fee of the fiat system in Canada. So it, like, it's kind of strange on, on one, you know, one, set of, one country and performance and, and outlook versus uh, another. Um, and you know, whereas Bitcoin is kind of this aggregate of what's happening all over the world. Yeah, I was just looking up uh, um, while you made that statement. I was looking up a map. You know, there's people who do maps from miners all around the world, mm -hmm. and you can see that there are miners everywhere. And and even still, when we look at these maps, and and people may claim centralization and all sorts of things over pool mining, 
The fact is, is that there's lots of people that are mining on their own. They're just mining their hashing power to the pool. And it's really distributed all around the world. If one pool that you're mining to goes down, you simply just move to another pool. If you're the pool owner, you just move to yeah. another country. It, it's, it's, it's a little bit more difficult than just packing up your shirt and your shoes and going. But um, if you don't go, then somebody gets more opportunity and that more opportunity inspires others. It's, um, so can I ask you a question on, on this? No, I just thought about it. It's like, sure. I always thought of pools as centralizing factors also, but it's not centralizing the, the hash power. It's just centralizing the reward. It, it, well, right? exactly. It's so, so the way Bitcoin uh, many generations back removed the solo miner out of it, like Divi is a full reference client. Um, it has the miner in it, which is actually a, 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 a fork of the Bitcoin miner, heavily modified. Mm -hmm. um, Bitcoin itself removed that from it. And now the, the core wallet doesn't have any of those features in it. So you have to mine to a pool. But you're, if you have a miner, let's say at home, um, you're not solo mining on your own. You're, you're pushing that power and sharing that hashing power through to the pool. And that's the way most mining goes. So really the hashing power is distributed all around the world. Um, but you're right. It's just that node that mines the block, that pool, then they split it between those miners, right? So, right. That's the reward part. So It's the reward the, part. Yeah. But the actual hashing, that's still highly distributed. Like if the pool goes down for whatever reason, those those miners may not may be losing funds but they're still well they're all mining. committed to they're all committed to mining it's just the fact yeah. is is that if i have 100 people where we're all putting all of our energy together to 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 win and one of us can win or we're more likely to have 100 players on a team competing mm -hmm. that all have the same jersey on the difference would be is that we're all pretty equally powered and so when when that when that person wins that combined together it gets split between those miners there's a lot of pools that are are are, are i'll read more into this because i built a pool um but we'll read into more about the bitcoin but it it's it's split between all of those uh, those miners yeah. you yeah, get a well, proportion based upon what your we can imagine power. is that um mm -hmm. the reason for that and it's probably something that in a way is also related to dv or at some point was is that the size of the reward is actually very big on Bitcoin, right? And the resource that you have to provide to get a chance to get that reward is also huge. And so someone alone huge, yes. with yeah, their own expensive. machine <laughs> would yeah. take maybe years to get one reward. And of course, that reward would 47. pay off very well for the work yeah. that was provided. However, it is very difficult. And we can, again, we can see that with our own users when they're waiting for their rewards. Um, so mm -hmm. here, that would be the same. And so creating those pools enabled people to actually get more frequently some exactly. pieces, some part of the reward while still uh, keeping a decentralized system. Uh, what are the, what is the power that a pool can have? Can a pool decide to seize the rewards? Can it, can it decide to play, to play wrong? Um, well, you, usually when you're pool mining, now uh, I'm not an expert in Bitcoin pool mining, although I've done um, Litecoin pool mining. I've done some ETH uh, uh, proof of work, by the way, just for fun, some some pool mining. But generally when you set up your, your miner, you set up a payment address and then yeah. you commit to hashing on that pool. And so then all of our hashing comes together because if I can hash X bazillion hashes per second, it's that's added to the X bazillion hashes per second that that you're hashing, right? And so that's twice the opportunity for one of us to win. And so that's how it's split. It's paid to that address. I suppose it could be a pool, could be malicious, but they would last what? One mine? Ten seconds. <laughs> it would yeah, be, it would right. Be, <laughs> it was not, yeah. It's not a good long-term opportunity for anybody to operate a pool. Yeah that is malicious in any way. And that's right. That's just, there's no benefit in the long term. You, and besides, you'd have to build up a relationship with enough yep. people. And so if you're a small pool with 10 people mining, it's very unlikely you're ever going to win any opportunity anytime anyway. So 
you as the pool miner would probably shut down long before you would be able to be malicious. I'm sure it happens. Somebody will probably say, hey, I was part of this and it happened. But, yeah, but, um, so, but yeah. so there is a centralization, right? Like it seems pretty clear that it is, it is a centralizing step because it is. you are basically completely giving away your hashing power and then you trust the, um, the pool to send you part of the reward in return, right? I think there's three elements to the decentralization. One is the hashing. I think that's relatively decentralized. The rewards are centralized, right? Because it goes to the pool. The other thing is control because the pool owner can say, you got to run this software in order to participate in this pool. So there's, yeah. there's the possibility of, 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 uh, of control in terms of large pools can say everybody's running this software and then they have influence on what software is actually what, right. what influence mining yeah. software is actually being deployed throughout the whole network um so there's kind of like three elements and it looks like to me bitcoin uh does well on one um and then less well on the other ones let's put it that way uh and then other coins probably if they're if you think of sliding scales one to a hundred other coins may have different different uh um be better in different respects. Um, like, like there's no pooling in, well, there is, there's Divi go, right. There's pooling in, um, in Divi. Right. Right. But it's um, not, but, but that's not hashing, right. That's, that's you, you're giving somebody your money. Yeah, that would be true. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a centralized that's, service. And, they, and the weight is that way. So it becomes very centralized on the hashing part. That's right. And so it's, here it's, is the thing, yeah. right. Um, I think it was random string who told me that, but, um, a system is only equal to its weakest point, right? And so yeah. very clearly here we can see that um, the pools in that system require trust. Like that's basically what's happening, right? Like you trust those pools. So of course there is no trust in the actual validations of transactions and all that. Like it seems that this is uh, pretty secure on that front. Um, of course, there is the influence part that you just mentioned that um, could actually be pretty important. But yeah. on, on the other side, it's really the fact that um, you are giving away basically your authority over whatever could be earned from your ashing power. So that's why I'm saying you're giving away your ashing power. You trust the pool that they will reward you back, but in reality, you're just giving it away. So yeah, you're you're correct. Oh, I think I, I, I think yeah. that, but that's different than centralization. We're talking about trust at that point. That is centralized, but I think the overall distribution of the network in a decentralized aspect, there's always going to be some centralization. If I have a single node, which by the way, I'm syncing a full Bitcoin, fully indexed Bitcoin node right now. You're right. I'm centralized. That's my node. If I share that data with you, and it's just I share it with you and Rob. Um, I am that centralized source, but it's only centralized to the three of us, right? Yeah. And that's what it is. And there's many nodes and there's many nodes in Bitcoin mining. There's many mining pools and, and, uh, ant pool just happens to be the name I was looking at. It. It's bit, it's bit main that makes all the miners. I, I was yep. pulling up. No, but I think you have actually the reputation factor, right? Like very clearly when you have a trust factor then there is the reputation factor. Yeah, obviously, well, that's the way DPoS new, works, right? A new pool wouldn't get, uh, you know, the support that the big ones get, and then the big ones actually deserve the support to get. I, I think that um, I can't mention an exact number or uh, exact case, but I, I remember a few times that those pools actually refounded some fees that were paid uh, in error, and so. They they definitely try to establish themselves as reliable partners in that in that ecosystem. So You're I'm not dead. I'm not saying it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Just just making sure that yeah. we realize yeah, where it where it is um, where it requires trust and where it doesn't. Yeah, I think Satoshi I, Satoshi would have. I think if we go back over history. And we sort of condense it down and we infer a little bit. I don't think Satoshi was happy on the way that it, that it, it fell when we went to GPU mining kinds of things. I think that if, if you were to see it as going to pools, he wouldn't exactly be as happy. But the fact is, is that no one person can operate any one machine 
that is a single machine that any person can accomplish any sort of amount of hashing power that can compete with people who come together and mine in a pool. And so um, is it centralized to a, to a degree more than if we all had a laptop and you know, 500,000 of us were all competing mining together on our single laptop? Absolutely, it's, it's more centralized than that. But I, I think to say that, that Bitcoin pooling is centralized is a stretch. That's all I, I want to say because I everybody kind of agree. Also, the, the pool is dead if nobody participates in it. Yeah. Otherwise also, there isn't just one it. pool. I mean, I know there's like two or three big ones, but there's other ones too. I, yeah. I, I like, it's, I mean, I know that ten pools or twelve pools or whatever isn't super decentralized, but I mean, it's it's not like it's not like this one thing, and they all, those pools have to compete also. Correct. So, I, I, right. I think the system's in pretty good shape. Boy, we digressed so, on this conversation. Like, we we're did. talking about markets. We, we went I agree to with that, but then based on that, then the whole economy is decentralized because there are several competitors for everything. So yeah. I I don't agree with that. I think that um, decentralization and permissionless systems are actually, uh, it's on or off, right? Like if you are, if you're permissioned, then there is a scale. But if you're permissionless, there is no scale. You're either permissionless or you are not, right? And so here, while this is a much better system than the fiat system, it is still not in an ideal situation where people are independently being part of the system. We're again getting in a situation but where they we are, are independently part of it and i have the choice of either solo mining which won't give me i, I well actually you, you can't don't. solo mine you don't so yeah. that's what i'm saying right so not i not ideally solo mine. this is not possible anymore on bitcoin and and again this is where we are actually saying that tv offers that that actual solution right so um, it is it is actually an interesting point now yeah. again i like I say for all the things, right? The meme coins, DeFi, and here the pools. I think that we need intermediary steps to get where we want to go. And I oh, think yeah. the pools have been like serving a wonderful, um, wonderfully that role. Um, and yeah, and I think that's a great step forward. Now, I, I do believe that having people being directly part of the network is, is critical. If your cryptocurrency isn't having updates, upgrades, modifications, forks, if you want to call them, um, it's a dead cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is always in stages of upgrades and updates, as, as most cryptocurrencies are. Um, you can't expect it to always be the same. Could there be another method in the future? Could there be some other process in the future? Absolutely, there could be. Could there be one that's that, that spreads it out again as Satoshi's original vision of us all having this running on our own machine and, and having the miner and have the blockchain. There's a lot of things that go along with that. I mean, you got to sync everything. You got to have a fully indexed node um, so you can have a source to be able to mine from that history to validate those transactions. I mean, there's lots of things that have to go into it, but anything is possible. If I were to say, nothing is going to change i think you could slap me in the face because that's a lie mm -hmm. there can be all sorts of goodness that comes to all blockchains including bitcoin including divi um whatever whatever blockchain you put in there there should be change and if one further distributed the network so it was further decentralized and still provided that same stability um, uh, of of the security of the blockchain because that's the other thing that that the pools to provide that massive amount of hashing power has to you know it, it's it's immutable at that point after so many blocks it's constantly becoming more and more immutable but bitcoin is so difficult to mine that it is it is nigh unattackable it's just it was it's an embarrassing that somebody would actually say it could potentially be just not possible so could it get yeah. better absolutely it could it could oh, it who knows oh it will that's, yeah, that's yeah. I'm effective. also not of the opinion that uh, Satoshi's paper is like a Bible. I, I, I think you know, 15 years have passed. Things have changed. I think, I think change definitely should happen. It should happen with uh, consternation, like and care. Sure. Um, and I think you know, 
10 years later, 20 years later, 50 years later, I think there are going to be ideas that were assumed or stated in that paper that are not relevant yeah. or, or can be better, uh, perform better in a different way. So, I, I, you know, that may be heresy to some people, but that's, that's the way I kind of think about the paper. I don't think anything should be set in stone well, I, uh, and that things have to change with, with the times. Well, I think that the fact that you would say that it's not heresy means we have to drop you off this call. Okay, bye. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, is that there are there there are people in 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 Bitcoin per se that are so religious about Bitcoin that they're that that, that I, I should say I've heard because I I don't know a person who's actually edited the code and tried to make pull requests on it in any specific area regarding this comment, but the word on the street i should say is that there are certain devs that are fearful of editing satoshi code they don't want to they don't want to change it yet we're on version what 27 of bitcoin core um yeah. you know so it's been changed since then did my hand pop up look at that i don't know why my it hand did. is look there at your hand. why yeah, did my hand pop up look at that i have my hand <laughs> it's like i'm like what are you doing there? I'm like, i have no idea there we go. My hand is okay. gone. Um, you know, so <laughs> I, I was weird. I don't even know why I picked it up. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. <laughs> we shouldn't have fear of cleaning up code, right? That was one of the things that Random String went through was touching code, some of it Bitcoin, some of it Litecoin slash Dash slash Pivx, some of it the integrations from peer coin some of these some of these things that were in here were made by people before if there was a fear of cleaning it up we wouldn't have the blockchain that we have yeah. today that we're building all these features on you should always be looking at what you have what the difference would be is that i would stress is that the philosophy shouldn't change unless that philosophy turns out to be a negative and what satoshi was philosophically focused on was freedom through that communication protocol which was represented as a value transfer protocol now a store of value freedom from people manipulating systems that controlled other people he brought freedom to people so when we start when we start expressing it like that where we all have the option to participate or at least we all have the option to see and then vet what's going on we all have the option to use we all have the freedom to use censorship free. We all have those freedoms. That's a philosophy. Divi is a, a Divi, Divi and Bitcoin, their communication protocols. It's just that, that how they communicate tends to be by value transfer or store of value. Let's move on. There's one more thing I want to just quickly bring up because uh, I really liked it. Yeah. Um, in, in marketing. So Mark Cuban has been on a, was on a little rant recently. And I just, I just want to reiterate it because I really like it. And I totally agree with him on this. I don't agree with him on everything, but on this, uh, he's just, he's just really took a shot at, uh, the SEC and Gary Gensler. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I can't agree with this more about, uh, so the way he, uh, I don't know the dates here, how he started this, but he really talked about how, the way he talk, says it is, this is how Gary Gensler and the SEC are trying to destroy the crypto industry. They make it impossible to comply with registration rules. And th it's so true. Like the reason why you see all of these companies sh showing up in Grand Cayman, all this stuff that happens not in America. I mean, you can sort of see that things are attached, but you know, legally they're just de detached and it's just added friction and cost and just, to appease these guys. And more importantly, they're saving no one, like nobody. It's all after the fact, people got hurt, all after the fact things. Uh, blockchain itself is super transparent. When people make account, like all of this stuff is all the stuff where people are getting hurt are custodial, they, people have accounts. So it's not like the blockchain stuff's hurting people, it's the custodial part. And you, you know you can you can find out information on their platforms and those people should be going through a very clear, very simple process. And he just he just really nails it on these on these tweets about the process to register securities, the process to uh, avoid litigation. Um, 
and, and still make things open to America. Our users, Divi users, are constantly uh, being uh, seeing the bad end of the stick. Uh, not you know, Americans not able to get to uh, KuCoin. Uh, yeah. People not using BitTrue who are from New York or Texas or however it's working right now. All of this stuff. And I was just so happy to see him take a shot that way. And then not only that, point at an example of, an, of another country that did it right. And he's pointing at Japan who worked to protect crypto investors. Now, let's not conflate Japan's economy with the way they approach regulation. <laughs> yeah. their, their economy is sad for a number of other reasons. <laughs> it has been for a while. But the, the ability to regulate crypto in a way that allows people, us, other projects to supply services, supply things that people want in America um, is there. I mean, it's been laid out in other countries. We could just do it. And and they've saved nobody. Anyway, he went on this big rant. I followed up with my rant just now. I just really like that fun, finally somebody with some names is, is really saying it. Yeah, well, that uh, that sort of closes off the segment, but I think I agree. It's it's uh, we definitely need some wisdom in the both the politics and the non governmental organizations that um, do control certain things, um, governmental and non governmental alike, that can influence uh, what we can and cannot do, at least in the states. Um, I think I think that's I, the nice hope. I I didn't see often much wisdom in governments, but you know we we can always hope. Um, what we can see is <laughs> it's not only Gary, right? It's it's always the same. Like who, who look who was the closest to regulators and um, basically getting getting crypto um, in the like with the red carpet. Oh yeah, it was SBF. Oh yeah, great. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. it's always the same, right? Um, the worst are always the ones that are actually uh, welcomed, and then it's uh, it's the way yeah. the world works. So I th well, yeah. I, I, you know, again, we can kill this section as we go, but it's that's a sad statement. But that statement also hinges upon the way people want trust. SBF was embraced media people that means famous influencers or sports figures embraced ftx yeah. but why did they embrace it because supposedly they did jump through all the hoops to provide the trust supposedly they did jump through different types of procedures and audits to do certain things they did do certain legal you know, uh, procedures to protect the client. Well, the fact is, is that I think that just not. comes down to the statement about <laughs> government is yeah. we need, to, you know, I'm not going to get into politics too much because I'm pretty hardcore when it comes to politics. The fact is, is that we just, we just need wisdom and, and people that do things like what he did shouldn't get the types of punishment, in my opinion, that he did. I'm of the opinion he should have been punished far worse. They all oh, totally. should have been. There should. I mean, the be hoops that he ran through are yeah. we, figuring out which dinner party to go to. That's those exactly. are the hoops he went through. Yeah, you know, <laughs> not not a clear regulatory process, sure. uh, and which shouldn't have to be like the freaking FDA. Uh, you know, taking years to get through the process. It should be relatively simple. This is a very transparent thing we're, you know, that we have here. Um, and uh, like the, the process to get, to allow us to build, develop, deploy uh, crypto assets should be very simple. It be simple, yeah. But it's, it's not, and honestly, any hope that there'll be wisdom in government. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I, be I wouldn't count on it uh, too, too fast. Right, so the next segment will be about the DV Wallet Mobile. So the DV Wallet Mobile is developed by a partner, DV Labs. Let me actually yeah. um, do a little um, side topic for a second. So we, we don't have um, someone from DV Labs directly. I mean, as you probably know, we, 
uh, Voice and I are, are also working for DV Lab, so we can definitely talk about that. But we don't have yeah. any guests today. It's a little bit early with the avatars, and we're not we're not really ready. But at some point, at some point, we'll be ready to have guests, and we'll probably get Nick and Jeff to to talk about their own things. Um, so regarding the DV Wallet Marble, so the DV Wallet Marble was uh, released first in 2021. And mm -hmm. the idea behind it, um, the DV Labs idea was really to provide a very easy, um, very lightweight, accessible, fast wallet that users could interact with. And and really that's, that's what they delivered, right? Um, so currently in the DV Wallet, you can send, receive, store Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, DV, and every ERC20 uh, token. And then you can also convert all your uh, up to 300 assets through the change now conversion feature. Change now is a is a very cheap option. Um, it is a crypto to crypto, so it's also it doesn't require KYC, so it's extremely practical. And then we also have a fiat option for buy that is going through Simplex, where you can buy DV, Bitcoin, Light, and Litecoin, right? And so those options have been. Um, in the wallet since I think um, 2022 for the most part for the conversion yeah, and the buy, and and then they are we are you are actually a lot um, using it uh, frequently. And one thing that's maybe interesting to know is that compared to other uh, wallet providers, um, the DV wallet is actually having a majority of people that are purchasing DV in the in the wallet. And sure. again, yeah, this is something that they're not familiar with. Usually Bitcoin is leading. And and so, yeah, so that was a fun fact about uh, the wallet. And then we have also the staking votes, which is a technology unique to DV. Um, so you can start with one click. You can start a staking vote in the mobile wallet. Um, so we'll talk about uh, what will be coming for the staking vote. But I also want to touch touch on uh, the issues because we've been facing a few issues in the last year or so uh, with the wallet and I wanted to uh, talk about why we have those issues and what we've been doing to address them and what are the next steps basically. So one, one of the things that we realized when um, we started to work uh, voice and also random string who actually helped us also to work on that the wallet um, is that all the things that are, that had been built while they were working, um, while they were working, uh, they were working fine, were actually not designed to be scalable. They were not properly integrated with um, each other. Like with each piece, was not really integrated well with the other, and it was creating a lot of friction to be able to create anything, debug, and it was basically a headache to to be able to move forward. Yeah. And that's, that's how we ended up with months and months where the app was basically stagnant. Um, we weren't able to bring any new feature to, to the app. It was, was basically a very complicated situation. So in the last 12, 15 months, um, with, of course, the difficulty of the market, right? We had to reduce the team also. So we had a smaller dev team and we basically had to address those issues to be able to uh, move forward with the wallet, integrate new features, and and obviously address the, um, the issues that um, you've been facing for, for those who have been facing those issues. And so one of the main uh, components of that is something we call modular asset integration. This layer is basically handling send receive for every asset. And is, it is also the layer with which all the third party integrations um, will will basically communicate, right? So this base layer will enable the DV wallet to completely scale um, a lot e easily, a lot more easily. And it will be able to integrate a bunch of new features, um, including some new themes, some NFTs. But I think that um, Voice will be talking about that uh, just after. Um, one thing that we're also doing is changing all the screens. Like currently the screens that you see in the wallet, they're not very... Um, they're not very easy to improve. They're not very easy to debug. And so we're completely rewriting them in a much better approach, which is a lot easier to debug, a lot easier to improve. And so everything, everything will be changing. And that's, that's basically the, the big work that we've been doing over the last few months. And one, um, one good news that I can say is that DV Labs is actually hiring a senior engineer for mobile. So you will see them 
job offering pop up on our website. Um, and then um, we're really looking for someone very highly qualified. This person is, is supposed to lead the next, um, the next step to basically make sure that we complete this uh, modular asset integration phase and then help us move forward towards the next step that that voice is going to present now. Yep, yep. So you we're talking about hiring somebody new um, that has those advanced knowledges of, of the technologies. Um, the, and again, just to reiterate what Neegs was saying about the scalability, it has to do with a lot of things that were coded and some of those you see in experience as you're using the wallet and by adding certain philosophies to the development as you heard him say uh random string and you've read the articles on modular asset integration excuse me the modular uh blockchain uh that that uh that he's built divi into he had a lot of philosophical input that's allowed us to do the things i'm going to be speaking about which is uh, removing things from being both spaghetti code integrated and hard coded into the app, which then it provides those difficulties that Neeks was talking about that that we will dressing. So some of those things that we're going to be doing is changing the way that you actually view history and transactions and exchanges and sends and receives in the wallet. That will be clarified it will be modularized it will be separated so you can see your list of uh, 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 let's say conversion transactions you will see your list of send and uh, receive history it'll be split up so you can actually view it a lot better the other thing that will be coming which i don't have in the notes here and and Neegs, you can you can add to this but um uh, we're also uh, going to be uh, uh, working on the fact that the export for the CSV will be improved. There's all sorts of things that will be going into the viewability, but even in the functionality. Um, your screen assets, as you see, you know, trends and volumes uh, uh, for those individual assets and maybe your top assets, maybe your favorite assets, those things will be viewable. It will look it will look much like in the same color scheme, but the layout itself is going to be changing. So it'll be a lot more fluid. So when you open the app, you'll be able to see distinct information on the assets and their performance right now. Um, even in the ind individuals, if you remember in the old Divi wallet um, uh, 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 marketing or some of the screenshots that we had, you had trend lines and you'd had uh, lines for the market. Um, those were in those ads, but they weren't really in the wallet. Those will be built into the wallet so you can see those kinds of things happen about volume and price. The other thing that people have asked for repeatedly over and over again, and we, we keep talking about some of the changes, but it is that NFT support. It is the NFT support where you can actually see the asset. It, it'll be in the mobile wallet. You'll be able to see those assets and even maybe uh now some of it i'm going to speculate on maybe even see the current values of those assets as they relate to the different markets that they're in so the nfts will be there so you'll be able to send and receive you'll have the galleries the individual display for those nfts and that's just in nfts now with the modular asset integration which is Previously, what Neeks was speaking about, modular asset integration deals with blockchains and how they're integrated. That means, yes, we will probably always start off with the ETH because we have eDivi on ETH. But that means the future ease of use of implementing because of my is what I call it, modular asset integration, can include other blockchains. People are excited about other blockchains and other technologies with NFT support. Um, that can easily be done as we start moving forward. You know, so NFTs are fun, but if we talk about staking vaults, everyone who had a staking vault that was on mobile, you have the original version and process for staking vaults. If you're on desktop today, you're on the most highest optimized release of staking vault deployment there is. So it's a different process. It might even be a little bit different performance depending upon what we look at. The whole staking vault system in the mobile um, is going to be uh, removed if we want to say it like that. That means it's going to require uh, you to redeploy. It's going to re require 
different setups, it's going to be more like it is in desktop. Or if I dare say it, it'll be more like how you deployed a master node originally. So you'll see staking vaults deploy and, and deploy out how you would have seen master nodes. So staking vaults will be upgraded. It'll be optimized. Um, it'll be easier to manage. It'll be easier just from the feature flow and the user experience based upon withdraw um, and add funds, uh, close the vaults or upgrades. All of those is, is going to have different feature sets that are added through the flow that will make it cleaner and easier to use. It's going to use the same lightweight infrastructure that we have on the other systems for the same cores. It's just going to be beautiful. Then what we have is there's going to be custom themes coming. There'll be built-in custom themes. You know, some of the things that people like about the desktop is we can go to dark modes and all those kinds of things. There's going to be all sorts of tweaking and custom themes that will be coming in the Divi wallet. Now, not all of these things will be coming all at one time. As we've stressed before, even in the desktop wallet, we add features, tweak those, and then add other features. It's iterative. So all of these features and functions uh, will be coming in layers as we move past the MAI modular asset integration, which is a key feature and function to help everybody with syncing and uh, being a little bit more scalable and robust with displaying and sending assets. Um, so as that comes, as we pass that mark and we start adding those features, you'll see iteration upon iteration and updates. So we've got a lot of things planned about Divi Mobile Wallet and working with the Divi Mobile Wallet's team over there and helping them and advising them and Neegs with his direction on planning for these things. It's going to be really exciting. The other thing that I'll end that with is we will have in the long term eventually support for um, compatibility with the desktop. That's been something I've stressed almost from the beginning. In fact, you may not know it, but there already is some desktop compatibility. You may not be able to use it today, but I've tested it, desktop compatibility in the, in the, uh, from the mobile to the desktop. So more chain support also. So there's lots of goodness coming to the Divi mobile wallet. You might not see it. You might not feel it today. Um, you know, so there is definite maintenance continuing going on, but this is what it's all moving towards all these great things that you've been asking for. Is there anything you, else you'd like to add, Meeks? Yeah, it has been a very difficult time to go through, but we're, we're slowly reaching the end of that. So that's really a good news. And I think there are also other things that we didn't mention, like the integration of DVSwap, the integration of DVSwap. Oh, yeah. Like those things are definitely also on the roadmap. Um, I... I think that there will also be very soon some news about that. So we'll be very happy to to have Nick at that time. Yeah, but that'd be great. Yeah, uh, the, the DV Wallet is really, a, um, I think, a great option. It's a different approach to to the system. Of course, right now, it, it's still a, little, a bit lagging behind, but it seems that very soon, by the end of the year, we, we should have the same kind of feature set that other wallets have. And then we will have our unique options like the staking votes and we will also explore um, what we can do on, on that front, right? If we can host other nodes and all that. It's not it's not on the short term, definitely not. But just so you know that we also have that in mind. Yeah, that's true. The infrastructure would allow us to be able to support other blockchains even in the Divi Wallet mobile. I, I had totally forgotten we've even had that conversation, but that's the great thing about modular asset integration and having knowledge and infrastructure already in place to support that. that that's awesome. That's awesome. We had a few questions about what kind of processes will make that we're using DV in the sidechain model. Uh, why are our sidechain different? So we, we already went through that, but we'll basically go into detail about that. And then we'll finish by talking about the, ne the next milestone. So as we already said, the sidechains are brought to us by a partner and this partner um, is definitely has its own milestone. So we'll be happy to communicate about that. Um, so do you want, do you want to start maybe Rob? I think we talked a lot about the DV water. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to kind of like start with an overarching thing, but we'll repeat again that the DV, Divi side chains are how we're bringing utility to Divi, yeah. um, Divi like Bitcoin, like, uh, Litecoin in and of itself only has the utility of being a 
you know, a cash system kind of thing, you know, an exchange of value um, and not much else. And the cool thing Ethereum brought was like, hey, we can do programmable things on blockchain. Um, and then we all kind of agree that almost all blockchains from that point on, with a couple of exceptions, went about the same process by which you have smart contracts developed by some centralized people doing uh, performing its function within a centralized uh, platform. Uh, it's only decentralized in that Ethereum itself is decentralized. Same for same for um, Polygon and so forth, and any, all these smart contract platforms. Uh, and and that model is, you know, it was neat, and it was and it, actually it took them a while a while to figure out what you do with this with this technology. They got it. I think there's a lot of people doing a lot of things with it. Um, but then you get into things about scalability um, and load and how the first time for me was CryptoKitties. All of a sudden, all the fees went skyrocketing. Nobody wanted to move funds anywhere because it was all expensive. We've seen it now multiple times on Ethereum. It's one of the major uh, business points for Polygon in that, hey, it's, it's just like Ethereum, but it's cheaper until everybody uses that. It's not a different technology. It's just where people are doing things. Uh, Bitcoin just had it with runes and, and ordinals, same things, fees skyrocketed. And so if you are having your, your whole product based on a smart contract on one of these platforms, and all of a sudden the fees go through the roof, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're doing something serious that, it becomes kind of dead in the water, uh, at least for the time being. But that time being can be months. So we see side chains as the way, as as well. One of the features of side chains is to combat is to combat that. So when you want to do a project, whatever it is, um, you do it on a side chain, and therefore the popularity of a different side chain doesn't affect what you're doing on your side chain. So if I'm doing uh, asset tracking on my side chain. I've got a business around following drugs through a supply chain. I do not want some meme, popular meme, uh, destroying all the costs that's uh, that is associated with what's happening on my on my side chain. So that's one of the reasons why we we look at side chains as a, an overall benefit. To maybe move forward to something that. Um, could show something similar, like a similar approach, but um, so something that is kind of a step, an intermediary step, is the Cosmos system, right? Like if you actually yes, look exactly. at the Cosmos system, that's that's the approach that they took. So they did side chains, and they have a system where you, anyone can actually start their side chain, and it is a bit different. Like it's not. Um, not oriented toward providing a service like like we and especially our partner wants to uh, push forward <clears throat> sorry however what you can see is that they they did that system which is uh, basically scaling up with uh, those side chains that are connecting through hubs but they actually hit a wall and that wall is that outside of the cosmos network there's no communication and they actually found a way, but that way is the same way you see everywhere, right? They use bridges, they use smart contract, and that's probably the last, uh, the last system we, we will get to um, at the end. But basically this interoperability until now, one of the best system is Cosmos and it is limited to their own ecosystem. And what we, what we provide as Divi is basically the same kind of system. However, it is not limited to Divi. It is actually open to all the different blockchains that integrate that technology. So that would be a very interesting, a very interesting um, situation for blockchain that now the interoperability is not limited to one network and it, it can be trustless across blockchain uh, like the well the thing i don't like about the cosmos side chains uh I, I can't say i don't like it i really i do admire the cosmos network i i like it um i just don't think it's as good as it can be um but if you're a side chain there you can only connect to the the main hub um you can't connect to uh let's say let's say we wanted to open divi to to a uh, a side chain uh of cosmos like there's not a way to do that the fact you say uh, hub it yeah. brings a visual to mind <laughs> that is that is problematic to me. I understand. Right. I can appreciate a technology 
uh, uh, Stellar is a great technology. Ripple is a great technology. I think they're they're pretty awesome digital assets, but are they everything that is that is uh, um, behind what in the reason the why we do things? No, I don't agree with the way that they do things. In the same way, right. I, some of these other blockchains um, make themselves, let's say, interoperable, but there's some gatekeeper in between, right? Let's talk about uh, currently, how do they address from one blockchain to another blockchain? And, and very clearly, the only way right now is smart contract, right? A smart yeah. contract on yeah. one blockchain, a smart contract yeah. on the other blockchain, and then the interoperability is between those two smart contracts. So Yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's originally it was like an oracle. So actually, originally, uh, it's almost people <laughs> to get from, That's right. I think the first one I saw was Rootstock, right? To get to their EVM. It was a Bitcoin based uh, EVM. It was a few uh, multi sig wallets and, and it was scripts moving funds, uh, minting and burning as, as needed on the on the side chain. It's now gotten way better. So we definitely have to admit that it's better in that what's now happening is there's actual smart contracts on one platform, smart contract on another platform, an Oracle system, which could be a single node or a computer being the Oracle or more mod or in a more modern context, it's a it's a network of right, nodes a relay your that network. are yeah. relaying information from one blockchain to another. It's hard to disrupt because it's a network of them. It's redundant in that way. It, it in and of itself kind of works like a blockchain itself, um, and so it's it's pretty reliable in that uh, it needs to communicate uh, from one blockchain to another. But you are still relying on a very centralized methodology by which to who wrote the smart contracts who owns the nodes in the relay networks that kind of stuff is still kind of very pertinent yeah that's that's not how it works for divi side chains what random string found allow us to envision um like a network like an interoperability that yeah. actually allows every chain to be connected with every chain theoretically right that's obviously not uh, most efficient way but having a system that where a chain can connect to another chain if there is a purpose for that right and so that's true it is, it is very different and it doesn't rely on oracles which uh, when you were um w when you were mentioning um the um, the oracles right and you were mentioning that it works basically like a blockchain in fact there is one thing that is extremely different is that oracle you cannot audit oracle right so yeah. it, it is a very very uh, big weakness so obviously it is great and and i think that's also something we mentioned last time these are all part of the trust minimized technologies right correct like you have a smart contract and then that smart contract is the keys for the smart contract they are not held by one person but actually they are in a multi-sig wallet which is distributed over a network so they're trying to minimize the centralized points but but unfortunately until until now they weren't able to find uh, the proper technology that would enable them to get rid of those of those points and this is what DV will bring, right? Like our, our partner, it definitely has this technology and will bring um, the complete <clears throat> interoperability of all assets for blockchain. Mm. I am not a fan of any of those networks. I can see the weaknesses in all of those networks. I can understand how those networks come together. There is other technologies out there. They've never come to fruition the way that we needed it. And what this partner has provided is a, in a way, a much better infrastructure, a much more flexible uh, uh, communication between blockchains, a much more robust and decentralized process. Everything that's decentralized, even as we talked about when we got started, depends upon participation. So when you have one person, it's centralized. When you have thousands, it becomes more and more distributed and decentralized so you know there, there's ways to do it but i'm not a fan of these other ecosystems i think they have great technology but when it comes down to being perfectly or purely trustless or when it comes down to making sure that it has the robustness and still is decentralized they each have their weaknesses which i think 
as this technology grows and as it's integrated will provide us with all the same things that satoshi would have thought about besides just making the statement that it'll be in the desktop wallet as a store that's a very broad statement but i i would like to express that of course when people are running vaults it, it's not about just passively doing nothing you have to have an active node in a stable situation maybe even a more robust node maybe not um, depending upon the side chain that will be deployed that is how you will work and earn you'll support whatever that chain's yeah. uh, philosophy and technology is on that chain yeah i think i think i mean there's definitely a front end that we can hopefully put together that makes looking at the side chains available yeah. and when i say available i mean available to be supported um make the side chains available uh, to see uh and make it easy to participate uh you know send compute power towards it for uh staking on those um or i should say validating on those validating, um, yeah. right on those side chains um but so and then finding the best reward side chain i think there's a bunch of like in that same kind of front end and it doesn't have to be us it can be um it could be other people that make websites that, that uh, you can see this in all other um in every other uh blockchain project you'll see some enthusiastic community members who make websites that post stats in fact i did that for divi years ago um and i think you'll see that uh people say well here are the stats on all of these side chains and here are the rewards they're currently getting here how many nodes there are on it here is the maybe the chances uh yeah. or or maybe some uh some some kind of um metric on benefit if you point your services at it what you can expect to get maybe some uh, alarms or notifications when your uh when your rewards drop below some some point and maybe you want to go research for some other uh, side chain there's a whole bunch of stuff that can be done with regard to finding the best reward side chain some of that or all of it may be supplied by Divi or, or yeah. our partner, and some of it may be the community. I, I, think I don't it should be really the know how that's going to go out. So right here now. is, I think, a question that was that was asked about that, and I think where there is a point of confusion. So the side chains themselves, they're not secured by staking Divi. We had this question, um, if I want to secure X and Y side chain, do I have to split my Divi? among those two side chains, right? And so your DV will only be there to secure DV, right? That's the, that's the way it works. DV, uh, those DV provide you weight and that's how um, basically some weight is given to when you submit blocks and, and that's how you earn reward. Now on the side chain, it, it's a little bit different because there is no minting. There is no new coin that is created and distributed. What is dif distributed is the fees. Like you, you earn fees from those side chains. So the only thing you provide, again, you don't provide any coin for that. You just provide resource, right? So exactly. the side chains, they will need a decentralized network like DV, like Bitcoin, where they will be able to basically, you know, process their transactions um, in a decentralized manner. And, and that's what those validators provide. <laughs> so you won't need coins to do that. You will just need a machine. And so that machine can secure one, two, 10 side chains, depending on obviously the operations of those side chain, the size of your validator. And that's what I was hinting at when I was talking about the advanced staking vote. So yes. because the advanced staking vote will allow you to on one side st stake DV, but also do a validator role for those side chains Correct. without requiring um some divi right so that's the that's the concept yeah so it's a paired it's a partnership uh when you deploy those nodes so it's uh, they work together because let's say you're a vault and you have that advanced staking vault um that is able to provide those services yep that's right Another thing that's miscommunicated or not communicated well, perhaps I think, is that uh, like how it, how the economy works with side chains. So the key to remember is that while it's possible, the utility on the side chains doesn't require a new token. Um, so true. Again, 
there's a there's a little asterisk there because I don't know what people are going to make with sidechains. So maybe it will. But the the key part are for Divi sidechains is that when you go to utilize the the actual services on those sidechains, the, the utility that you're seeking, you're going to pay for that utility with Divi. Um, and so that's how that works. The Divi will enter those sidechains uh, when you pay for the service that you want on those sidechains. Uh, you, what you pay is what's getting split up amongst the um, the validators on that side chain, and the validators will receive some or all of the of those fees. That's that's uh, you using Divi to get the services and, and be granted the utility that you Correct. want. Correct. That's the economy happening there. We need to have it. It, it is if we do. <laughs> I use a curse word. No, I'm kidding. Um, it is. Ethereum is a gas. Ethereum is the engine. Ethereum is the coin that's produced, at least originally by proof of work and now by the proof of stake, which is very different, by the way. Don't get me on that one. It's very different from what you do as a vault or a solo validator on Divi. Um, those coins are then used in the system to do things, not originally as Vitalik intended. Uh, he didn't intend it to become a, a coin per se as a value transfer. He intended it to be the mechanism, as he stated, gas for the network. We intend for both. Divi can be used for utility, but Divi can also be used for whatever you dream it to be used for. If you dream that you want to use your Divi to be able to buy uh, uh, whatever you want to be able to buy with it, that's totally entirely up to you. We want it to be as flexible and usable as absolutely possible. It just also happens to be the engine, the gas, if we dare say it, that drives the side chains. That's right. And so, so I think that's, that's a full understanding on how fees and how Divi is used to get the utility and grant utility to Divi. I think so. Yeah. And I mean, in a way, right, I understand it's very complicated because as you just mentioned earlier, everything is possible. So obviously there is <laughs> there is a direction that DV will focus on, and obviously this is DV utility. But at the end of the day, anyone could deploy a sidechain and uh, not use DV or use decide to use another asset or even not connect could, to yes. DV, right? So um, it, it is, in a way, for me, it's what makes it the best option, right? It's not, it's not something that is uh, limited to Divi. It's actually fully open. Um, so it will, be, it will be our role to make sure that um, Divi remains a critical point in, in those development. And Correct. again, like we will come with those you know, sidechain themes where people will be able to deploy their service. And, and obviously, that framework will be using Divi. So, as you can see right now, in most of the smart contracts and and other things that people just copy paste, um, they don't change that, right? They don't go and take the time to change the currency, and it will benefit DV two. That's uh, that's almost sure. Correct. Correct. So maybe we can talk about the next milestone of that part. Uh, we can. I think. Uh, I think we are looking for more motion on this in Q3. Uh, we're being. We are in Q2 right now, um, and it's it's hard to say what and where and so forth because we'll we'll be betraying an NDA. Um, so we won't. <laughs> we also won't be words using words like soon and imminent. Uh, but uh, I, I I think uh, it's safe to say that we can definitely open up a lot more. Uh, in Q3 about who the partner is and what we're getting done and what, what the short-term goals are. Um, but, and that we'll be able to do that then. Until now, we can just talk about what, what really the side chains, what we're going for um, and what, you know, what freedom and leverage and utility that, that having this technology will bring that doesn't exist elsewhere. Yeah. And honestly, you know, individually, all of the, the value, the utility, all, all those, the security, all of those things exist individually elsewhere, but not together. 
like what this is doing. Correct. Um, and that's really what is important. Like, when he, when Neeg says trust minimize, it's important because that's exactly what everything out there is. Um, and trust minimize, in our view, and I think we'll find out in the end historically or in the in the future history, uh, that that isn't enough. You really. It, Everything, the path to utility has to be trustless, and that's what this technology is doing, um, and that's where we are going with sidechains. As for sidechains, um, you know, we've said it many times, and it's hard to get people to envision what you can do with sidechains when we say you can do anything with sidechains. But honestly, everything that you see done and can do in smart contracts can be done in sidechains, either because we have an EVM sidechain and you can do all the EVM things, but honestly, that's the bad way. Um, our, our goal is to really have these side chains that are performing the functionality and obviate the need for any EVM type of side chains that consolidates exactly. all the activity in one place. So we'll certainly put it out so that people can get going on doing things, but as an overarching goal, we want that to become irrelevant. Yeah, because you're adding in some of the things you don't like. Just exactly. to make it easy to understand when in reality, um, really the, the leap over that to the next level, which is totally trustless, is right there. Um, but I think as we progress through things, we move one layer to the next layer. It's okay if as long as it's expressed that way. You know, it's, yep. it just has to be. Go ahead. And I think, yeah, it fits into what we see everywhere, right? Like there are intermediary steps. And for people to do a big change is not something they directly jump on, right? So yeah. having this EVM sidechain will definitely offer the possibilities that are the most familiar to people. And it, it does, you know, it does do something. Like if people are more familiar with something, they will tend to, to go there. But then when the new model will actually start to pop up a little bit more, like people will have examples of actually working models, um, I think this um, one chain fit all will will definitely be obsolete. Um, I think that we can also give a little bit more uh, information for Q3. So we expect that um, if so, if the partner is able to meet their deadlines, um, I think that we can also talk that they have a plan to basically make themselves known, um, make DV known, make the the um, this technology that is getting in DV known for everybody. So we're yeah. definitely waiting yeah. for that. They'll and have funding. Anticipating to have um, some major some major activity if if things go as planned. So I think that will be um, a very interesting time for DV. Again, we're not going to talk about any dates. We can talk about milestones. Um, but right now, the biggest milestone we have is kind of based on our partner. Um, and then after that, I think we'll be able to do a, a, road, a communicate a roadmap with regard to sidechains. Um, and what's important is our partner uh, will be in a position to help a lot. Uh, first of all, they're going to do their own marketing and make a lot of noise, and we're going to be their partner. So there's going to be marketing uh, associated with that too. So we'll finally see some some nice um, attention and money spent on that also. Um, so I think though, in terms of plans and, and when, uh, we just, now is not the right time to talk about that. So really we're looking to see what happens in, um, third quarter. That's right. Uh, and then we can move on from there. That's right. They're, they're big. So what they told us is their big thing is summer. So expect Q3, expect Q3 to have some news. And then we, we hope to be able to talk more about, uh, the future plans, uh, that they have for us. You can expect some more changes. I think you have seen a big difference on the online presence. We'll continue that. Um, some of the things that are coming, we'll propose that. So there is actually a, a vote and an in-depth article about some marketing things that we could be doing in the next couple months. And then also the website, because we also believe that the website is a central point. We really want to have a renewed website. And, and those will be the things yeah. that will be coming in the next few months. 
I can't wait for the renewed yeah. website. People go to websites. They want to know about yeah. your project. They want to know what you're working on. And we have so much that we have that needs to be put on not just a blog, but there needs to be something up, updated. I really thought when Neeg started talking about the partner in Q3, I thought he was going to get us in trouble. I was like... <laughs> <laughs>